So what did your kid do in school today? This is pretty cool. Students at Washington County Middle School got the chance to be scientists and look for meteorites in Antarctica. And they have Carnegie Mellon University and a robot named Nomad to thank. Bureau Chief Andy Briggs has the story. This is just an overall view of this. Now, Through their computers, these students at Peters Township Middle School followed Nomad's mission to Antarctica, updated daily on important discoveries, and getting a robot's eye view of the frozen landscape, all by clicking onto the website. It was really cool because we got to get a peek down into a world that we'll probably never see. Developed at CMU, Nomad and a team of scientists spent two weeks in Antarctica searching for meteorites. Back in Peters Township, students simulated the robot's movements, discovering and identifying objects on the floor. Beep, 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 beep. Seashell. Uh, coordinates? We were doing a run for the robots to explain what the robots are doing and how they need instruction. And I think that the kids are realizing the relevance of this when they keep seeing news articles coming out. Uh, they came in, said it was on CNN News. They saw the newspaper articles, and it brings science into the classroom. It makes it a living entity. Teachers here jumped at the chance to be part of the CMU pilot project. Five other Pittsburgh area schools are also taking part, learning from a scientific expedition as it happens. That's the difference between this and a pre-canned experience, is it, is it is a real situation going on. And, and the best way to teach them what it's like to be a scientist is to give them those pitfalls and thrills of, of exhilaration as they find discoveries. CMU researchers say someday they hope to be providing the same internet service from another planet. In Peters Township, Andy Briggs, KDKA TV News. GIVE is a synthesis of new visualization and sound technologies created by artists and scientists at Carnegie Mellon University and new applications of existing interactive and planetarium technologies. The GIVE environment is composed of three elements. One, the full surround viewing space of the planetarium. Two, chromatech glasses utilizing color diffraction and refraction to produce 3D depths in each image. And lastly, a system of linked technologies providing graphics and sound to respond to audience involvement. This system uses an infrared camera located at the front of the planetarium, which detects audience members as they hold up reflective paddles and sends this signal to a unit called Cinematrix. The Cinematrix processes the number and locations of paddles at 30 times per second. This information is sent to a silicon graphics computer, which uses this collective audience response almost like that of a joystick or mouse, to control graphic simulations. These graphics are projected before the audience. This computer also sends information to a Macintosh computer which controls full surround sound so that sound comes from the same place as the graphics within the dome space. The four interactive scenarios shown are designed to be fun and educational and reinforce main concepts in the Journey into the Living Cell show. During this interactive lesson in scale, audience members control a slider on a long scale bar showing various systems ranging in size from atom to galaxy. The audience must position the slider to approximate the location of the cell relative to other systems. By holding up paddles, the audience members increase the velocity at which the slider moves up the scale, and by holding the paddles down, increases the velocity down the scale. Thus, speed and direction of the slider's movement is an average of the audience's activity. The Center for Postnatural History is a public outreach center that examines the changing relationship between culture, nature, and biotechnology. The postnatural refers to the life forms that have been intentionally altered through processes such as selective breeding or genetic engineering. These organisms are often omitted from traditional biological collections, such as natural history museums and zoos. The CPNH seeks to fill this need by maintaining an archive of living, preserved, and documented specimens of post-natural origin. This collection is then shared with the public through exhibitions, workshops, 
and publications. In this exhibit are presented a small sampling of the diverse range of post-natural organisms that exist today within the United States and Europe. Each of these plants and animals were modified and selected by an individual or institution for a specific purpose. As you examine these exhibits, consider that each has a natural evolutionary history as well as a post-natural cultural history. The Center for Post-Natural History. That was then. This is now. Dr. Martin Blake, eminent neuroscientist, is about to receive a fantastic, startling, and somewhat disturbing communication from out there. Calling Earth. Calling Planet Earth. This is Planet Earth. Uh, Earth? What is the point? What point? Flickerings from Earth. What flickerings? We are coming. But wait. Cha -cha -cha. What planet are you calling from? Planet Axon. Planet Axon? They came from Planet Axon. Axon. Paris, Rome, Tokyo, Moscow, Washington. Authorities have made the public aware that these spaceships are about to land, but where, we do not know, and when, we do not know. Their spaceships look like giant flying brains. Aliens from planet Axon were receiving flickering transmissions from planet Earth. These advanced creatures, even with their superior intelligence, could not decipher the Earth transmissions. And so, they have come to our planet for one purpose only. Stop! It's clear to me now. What you call flickerings, we call movies, films, flicks. Correct. And you are curious and astounded as to how we are able to make sense of these flicks. Correct. And you want to understand. Correct. And you've come here to... To examine your brains.